When installing an EV charger, regardless which charger you decide to buy, you have multiple options when it comes to selecting a circuit breaker size. Do you pick 30 amp, 40 amp, or 60 amp? You might be inclined to go straight to the largest circuit breaker size for the fastest charge setting, but you need to wait a minute and ask yourself, can my electrical panel handle it? To answer this question, you have to analyze and assess your personal electrical system at your home. So in this video, I show you everything you need to know to give you better confidence in selecting the correct breaker size for your house and charger. If you're new to my channel, thanks for joining me. Five years ago, I got the opportunity to work with Tesla. I designed supercharging stations throughout Northern California. I had to size transformers, size electrical switchgear, and panel boards. I also had to size all the wires connecting everything together. I definitely learned a lot, and I feel like all the content in this video is very important and you would highly benefit from all the concepts I will go over. I have to warn you, electricity is very dangerous. If any of this makes you uncomfortable, please hire a professional to do the job for you. I'm not responsible for any mistakes or miscalculations. With the disclaimer out of the way, I'm going to start at the very beginning, from square one. This is what a residential electrical service looks like in the United States. This is a single phase split system. It is a 120, 240 volt system with four wires. You have line one, the red wire, line two, the black wire, neutral, the white wire, and ground, which is green. This is the utility meter. It counts how much current passes through the connected wires. It sends this information to your utility and your utility will charge you accordingly. This unit is owned by your utility company, so it is not the responsibility of the homeowner. It is illegal to tamper or, or alter this unit since it is not your property. I will refer back to this meter later on in the video. Moving on to your electrical panel. Open up the door and look inside. There should be a current rating inside of the door. Common sizes are listed on your screen. You can see mine is 225 amps. This tells you the maximum amount of current the internal bus bars are rated for. Here is a picture of what the copper bus bars look like. In my case, the bus bars are rated for 225 amps. One bus bar is for the line A, the red wires. The second bus bar is for line B, the black wires. See how the bus bar alternates? In theory, all the wires connected to the right side should be black and all the wires connected to the left bar should be red. This wire should be tagged red with red tape like this one. See, in commercial applications, there is a third bus bar labeled in blue for 208 volt three-phase systems. This is line three, which is not present in residential panels. You can see the blue bus bar in this example. The colors allow you to easily identify which bus bar you are connected to, making it easier to troubleshoot if necessary. Not only that, it is required by code. These small details are important. Moving on to this device, this is called the main circuit breaker. It serves two purposes. It acts as a main shutoff switch. If I were to switch this breaker, it will stop the flow to the entire house instantly, which is extremely helpful in the event of an emergency. Secondly, it's a safety device that is designed to trip off the breaker in the event it detects a certain amount of current. It will do this automatically without any input from the user. Look at the rating and write it down. Mine is rated for 200 amps. If you don't have a main circuit breaker, that means your home is probably older and unfortunately, the calculations I'm about to show you do not apply to you. This will be a topic for a different video. Also, I'm making the assumption you only have one electrical panel and you will connect directly to it. If you have multiple panels and you want to connect your charger to a sub panel, that will be a topic for a different video. I still highly encourage you to watch and follow along. The electrical code has this equation here to determine if you can install a new device on an existing electrical service. From left to right, it is existing maximum demand times 25% plus the full load current of the new device is less than the electrical service size. The units for this equation is in amps. The electrical service size is the maximum amount of current your entire property can handle. This is the maximum allowance. Common sizes are listed on your screen. Look at your main breaker size and use that value for your service size. In my case, it is 200 amps. The next definition is the full load current of the new device. This is the maximum amps your charger or electrical component will draw. Refer to the installation manual of your equipment. This page shows the maximum amps for the five different breaker settings. There's a big difference between these two columns. 
the column on the right shows a full load current, while the column on the left shows the required breaker size. To calculate how to size your breaker correctly, you take the full load current of your device and multiply it by 1.25. This is a safety factor of 25%, which is a code requirement. As you can see, the user manual did all the math for you. 48 amps times 1.25 is equal to 60 amps, and so forth. For now, pick a full load amp value you think is appropriate based on your service size. I picked 48 amps since I'm shooting for a 60 amp breaker installation. Going back to the equation, the last step is to determine the existing maximum demand. Maximum demand is the worst case scenario. In other words, under heavy power usage, when everyone is home, when most of your lights are turned on, when TVs are on, you might have the AC running and you might have the washer and dryer running too. How much current draw does your electrical meter register? This is what we need to find out. This is called maximum demand. The electrical code requires 12 months of utility data to find this maximum demand value. To do this, you will need to sign in with your utility company and download your power usage. Every utility is obviously different. You might be able to do it online or you might need to call. Do whatever it takes. I have Austin Energy and they made it pretty simple to download this information online. Remember, we need 12 months of useful information. So if you're installing a charger in a vacation home that has been empty for the past six months, that data is useless. You need 12 months of useful information. I have my data pulled up here. Back to the utility meter. The meter registers four data points every hour. In other words, every 15 minutes, the meter is spitting out kilowatts per hour value and sending it to your utility company. Let's go over the first line together. On January 1st, 2021, from midnight to 1214, 0.16 kilowatt hours were registered. This spreadsheet contains one year worth of data and we're looking for the maximum 15 minute reading. To do that, we'll use the max function in Excel. Remember, this result is in kilowatt hours. We need kilowatts, not kilowatt hours. So to find kilowatts, we need to convert and divide by time, which in this case is 15 minutes. 15 minutes is equivalent to 0.25 hours. So divide by 0.25 and you get power in kilowatts. However, we need to take it one step further, divide by 240 and multiply by 1000 to get amps, which is what we're looking for. Now let's go back to the equation and plug everything in. Compute the numbers and you can see the equation checks out. For my particular house, even with the new 40 amp load, I'm only using about half of my service allowance. On paper, installing this charger at the max charge setting is not a problem. However, we can't get too excited yet. There is one last sanity check before we rush out and install everything. The last and final step is to confirm that your service wires are capable of handling the entire load we just calculated. To do this, you'll need to remove the panel cover and perform a visual inspection. These are your service wires here. Remember, these wires are always live. Your main circuit breaker will shut off anything downstream of the breaker, but your service wires do not shut off. Only the utility can de-energize these wires, so be extremely careful. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, please, please hire a professional. Taking a closer look, you can see these wires are aluminum. Notice the markings AL. If you have copper wires, look for the markings that say CU. Moving on to the size, you can see these wires are 4 aught. This table applies to residential service wires only. As you can see, the minimum wire size for a 200 amp service is 4 aught aluminum, which is exactly what is installed. Said in a different way, these 4 aught aluminum wires can handle up to 200 amps. Your service wires are the limiting factor. You can never exceed the current rating of your wires. If for some reason you cannot read the insulation on your wires, I've got news for you. Hire a professional. Please highly consider doing so. This is not a guessing game. You have to be 100% certain your service wires can handle your new load. I can't stress this enough. 
Based on this calculation and the confirmation that my service wires are sufficient to handle 102 amps, I can fully confirm installing this EV charger at the max charge setting is no problem for my personal home. Let me recap this entire process. You will need to investigate and find the following. Number one, your electrical service size. Number two, the food load current of your new device. And number three, you need to find your maximum demand for the past 12 months. Plug in all the values for this equation and compute. If everything checks out, confirm your service wires can handle your new load based on the table provided. If your computation fails, select a smaller charge setting. You have five different settings to try from. Keep trying until the equation is valid and then check your service wires. Yeehaw! I hope this information was helpful. I'll see you in the next video.